Hi everyone. Um, this is actually the third time I'm gonna film this video. I feel like when I filmed it like the last few times it just felt a bit too rambly so I'm gonna try and be more concise and the other problem was I feel like trying to do my makeup at the same time is actually quite hard <laughs> but um yeah I'm gonna try today that's why I've got like eyebrows on and primer and stuff um so the video today is gonna be I'm gonna start this little series I know like you know ba Bailey Sarian and all there's a lot of like mixing makeup with true crime or paranormal stuff but I want to kind of look at like medical mysteries like things that still aren't fully understood and I want to start with mine <laughs> um anyone who has fibromyalgia out there will know it's a very confusing illness and the way I got it was quite strange so I'm going to talk about it today um yeah so as a kid let me stop by doing some eyeshadow as a kid I was pretty I wouldn't say like super sickly I had a few a few problems in the sense of my ears were quite um a problem for me I had to get grommets because I was 20% deaf in each ear um I always had ear infections um so I always had like a few problems like that and then there was um there was a problem with when I got to about I think it was the age of seven or eight I had this it was actually on my birthday as well which <laughs> quite interesting I me and my mom had invited there was only like eight girls in our class um she had invited them to go to the pictures we were watching the wild thorn breeze film <laughs> and i felt so ill so so ill like this isn't related to fibromyalgia this is just a backstory on like my medical my medical health because i feel like sometimes it's interesting to look at that and sometimes i do wonder if it impacted what would happen to me later on but yeah, so I was at the pictures watching Wild Dawn Breeze and that is where all about all <laughs> most of the girls except one um went and sat at the front but I couldn't because I had a banging headache, my ears were hurting and the whole like it was like all down the side of my face was sore. So the only person who stayed with me is still like my best friend to this day and she was she's lovely honestly she's so understanding and stuff but i basically like managed to sit through that film and i don't know how i did it because i remember <clears throat> the pain was quite excruciating and it turned out when i got to the doctors and stuff that i had cellulitis in one side of my face and i woke up the next i think it was like the next day well like in hospital this side of my face swelled up so much and I remember looking at myself in the mirror and I immediately threw up like from seeing myself which is never really something that I've I've not really like a someone who gets grossed out by stuff super badly so that was kind of weird um so I had cellulitis um I was in for a while on antibiotics and stuff and they eventually sorted that out um and then I didn't really have many other problems with my health up until uh, I was 14. Now at the age of 14 I was let's take a trip down memory lane I was super depressed <laughs> the music I liked was very emo super <laughs> like I liked like the Smiths and just sort of <laughs> like I don't know like a lot of music like My Chemical Romance very morbid music and I loved that like I was going through that stage in my life where I was becoming a little bit of a, a goth I feel like everybody goes through a similar thing but on top of that I was majorly depressed super anxious had really low self-esteem and feelings of self-worth um 
I was just super anxious all the time and I don't even think I realized I was you know um so my mom I tell my mom and she kind of knows a bit more in the sense that like my dad's been through depression so she kind of like gets on to the doctors about it and I get sent to cams um to deal with my mental health and I had CBT <laughs> not worked I've, I've been on antidepressants and all antidepressants seem to do for me is just take the edge off which is honestly like well they can kind of ask for um so I'm under them but at the same time I started noticing that I'm getting a lot of swelling in my joints so it would go super red around like these parts of my fingers and my toes would do the same thing sometimes my knees and I like I don't know why but I kind of thought that this was normal but my mum was like I don't think that's normal <laughs> we should probably get you checked and at first I think they were thinking oh it might be like arthritis or something like that like I I also need to mention I'm someone who constantly crack on my bones like I know I know a lot of people find that so gross but that's just it was almost like it for me it doesn't feel right until it's been cracked like it feels sore so I remember them saying like oh it could be a sign of arthritis if you or it could cause arthritis so they start doing all these blood tests and they notice that I have inflammation in my body which is found through a marker called ESR and that just shows that there's some type type of inflammation in the body that but they don't know they don't know where it's coming from so they start doing all sorts of tests I've had like so many blood tests I actually remember there was one time I had like 16 vials of blood taken from me at one time I've always been quite good with like needles and stuff like it, it never really bothered me that much but um they start doing all these other types of stuff like bone density scans and I just like all these mad things just trying to work out where this inflammation was coming from and um they come back to me one day and they're like we've done this test um we think we found the problem um and so they say like oh we found the problem i think seems like you've got an infection called this quite a rare infection called bartonella and they referred me over to i think it was infectious diseases and they were like right so we're going to put you on antibiotics and that should sort you out so i go away by the way, I'm under a hospital on like that's quite famous called Alder Hay. It's in Liverpool. Um, it's a children's hospital, and I feel like they've always been really great with me. Um, however, that wasn't the end of the story for me, obviously. So, Bartonella, by the way, <laughs> it's quite an interesting infection. It's passed on through a cat scratch. So all of my illness <laughs> is caused by a cat scratch and um, it can be passed through cats, dogs and fleas. Um, and I did get scratched by my cousin's cat at one point. Um, so I knew that I had because they asked me when they told me, oh, we think you have Bartonella. So I was like, yeah, I think... I think that's makes sense so I'm on the antibiotics and nothing changes Um, I'm still getting swollen joints and on top of that now I'm starting to feel a huge amount of fatigue now fatigue for people who don't understand is it's not just feeling tired it's really not like if you can go to, to bed after feeling tired and wake up feeling refreshed, then you're not fatigued, you're just tired. 
but fatigue you don't get any you don't feel well rested at all like every sleep you have you wake up feeling just as tired as when you went to sleep just as fatigued and fatigued is also like your body feels completely exhausted and movement and doing things in general is just really difficult so I ended up they obviously check back in with you to see how you're doing after so long and I explained to them what's going on um and they basically after a while of more tests and stuff they conclude by because okay so I got diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome but chronic fatigue syndrome isn't something that you can just get tested for it's something that they have to rule out everything else before they can definitively say that's chronic fatigue syndrome so that's what they had to do and it took a while before I got diagnosed and by the time I did get diagnosed I think I was don't know I was 15 or 16 but I was very close to finishing school and I remember school being a big struggle for me as you can probably imagine um so yeah so now I'm on and now I have chronic fatigue and they're prescribing me medications which do help for the most part there are some things obviously I had to switch around and stuff but yeah you just sent on your way that type of thing you've got chronic fatigue now but after a while of me sort of telling them that I'm still I'm like <sighs> I was sleeping about 20 hours a day and I was so depressed I it's the worst I've ever felt like genuinely the worst I've ever felt and I don't know if it's now a case of I've just simply learned to cope or whether it was worse back then but I I feel like it is that I've just learned to cope um they come back to me and like right well there's not much we can do like we can't all we can do is offer you rehab which is basically just physio um and hydrotherapy and you have to get into a routine of not sleeping through the day and oh god um things like that you it's all about routine with chronic fatigue because if you oversleep then you end up making yourself feel worse just by sleeping because um obviously you never feel well rested after the sleep but it also messes up your sleep pattern in the night which you're not falling into like the deeper stages of sleep because you're not having a well rested sleep it's it's very complicated so i end up doing the um the rehab i end up staying in the hospital for six weeks which was honestly one of the hardest things to I don't know why it was so hard but it just felt like it felt like um I just felt quite lonely and honestly like being in a hospital surrounded by children as well it's not it's not easy you know um so yeah like I'm in hospital I'm doing it I do the hydrotherapy I manage to sort of get myself a bit better but still not 100% obviously I don't think there is like 100% you can get to I feel like it's just you just have to learn to live with this illness and I feel like I came out of hospital and bear in mind I remember I was so depressed and stuff my mum and dad had told me that if I you know like once I'd finished in in the rehab that they would get me a pet and guess what I wanted I wanted a cat <laughs> which is so stupid man like I mean you can tell that animals even though like one of them might have caused like a chronic illness in me I I never blame the cat like I still loved cats I wasn't scared of cats from then on I can't get Bartonella again so it's not really 
I wanted a cat. We tried to get a cat and that didn't work out because we had a dog that just was being quite like aggressive towards it. So we ended up giving that cat to a cousin and we got a dog instead. <laughs> I'm so happy I did get a dog because I'm going to put some clips of him in. He was like honestly the most precious little angel and to, he's he actually passed away last year but he was definitely a big emotional support for me um so he was really really <laughs> helpful and he he was such a loving dog and i he helped a lot because i was able to start going out a bit more and by that i mean just like giving him walks and stuff and i was getting the exercise i needed because when you don't use your muscles for a long time they become weaker and you need strength i was staying in bed like a lot so after the rehab when i got out i tried to get into the habit of going out with him just to you know get me out and it was also lovely seeing him with other dogs he loved other dogs like genuinely like it was his favorite thing getting to see other dogs and he every it's mad like i feel like in the place i live he was very well known like people used to say oh it's bruce and stuff they'd know his name before they'd know yours like he was just such a friendly dog and i loved him so much and i still do like still miss him every day um but yeah so we had this dog and he really did help however i eventually fell not fell back into it but i was starting to notice a lot more pain and the swelling of the joints never really went when because they thought they got rid of the bartonella i don't think i should sort of still had inflammation in my body but i did so they were doing tests and they found in an MRI that I had this spot of inflammation in my cerebellum, which is responsible for like coordination and motor skills, I think. So I was pretty shocked. My mum got quite scared that obviously on the brain, it's quite, you know, you would be scared at your kid. And I so they decided right like the the, the way we're going to treat this is through steroids and they put me on steroids and I gained a lot of weight <laughs> and I just um I just remember it sort of being kind of a hard time I was eating a lot but like it was almost like a comfort thing um and I just, I was on it for a while and then I think because they were quite scared of me having some sort of, this being some type of like cancerous thing, they ended up doing a lumbar puncture which is basically, um, they, they stick a big needle into the bottom of your spine and pull out the spinal fluid. Um, I don't remember it being like super painful because I think they like give you like an anesthetic well you know like the patches they give you on your back so you don't really feel it didn't feel it that much but my dad said it looked quite scary but I obviously couldn't see because I was like over um <laughs> I was like over the bed while they were doing it and afterwards they were like right you need to kind of like stay in like lie down for a couple of hours before you can leave and apparently that's something to do with like um it can make you feel quite ill after having a lumbar puncture so two hours go by I end up going home and I feel terrible <laughs> genuinely terrible I don't think I've ever felt this ill before and in the sense that I couldn't lift my head off the pillow I was just so tired, but I felt violently sick. Like I, I couldn't keep any food down and I was feeling really hot and cold all the time. So my mom obviously knows something's not right. They take me back. I have to sit in A&E 
vomiting into like those little cardboard things and just feeling absolutely terrible and eventually they come to see me and they they basically are worried that they think it's something to do with the inflammation that's made me sick but I have a feeling that it may have just been a viral infection or something I don't know it just felt like too weird that it happened right after the lumbar puncture however they so they give me an anti-sickness tablet which really did help it it like massively helped um so I was able to actually keep food down at that point and they just tell me right we're gonna up your steroids so you have to come in and have a intravenous strip of steroids every so often so that's what happens my dad has to keep running me backwards and forwards to to the hospital just to get this done and um i remember the what they do is like because it's like coming in through the drift and stuff um i just remember feeling really like i'd get this horrible taste in my mouth every time and it was like probably like the strongest steroids that they can give and it was it was pretty rough like through that um and I didn't really find it helped much so at this point I think I'm starting to get to the point where they're gonna discharge me from child services and move me on to adult services but they don't want to do that quite so quickly because I think they know that when they discharge me, I'm not going to get seen to. Like, I'm going to be lost in the system. And I didn't know this. So they kept me on until I was 19. And basically, at that point, I go into adult services. Now, I struggle immensely. Like just telling people about my illness is quite difficult for me Um, I don't like talking about it and I don't really know why <laughs> I think I was embarrassed somehow I've just I, there's something about this illness that makes you feel less than a person which is horrible so I so I end up in their services going to my gp a lot i get told you know i've had some really horrible experiences with doctor in doctors including there was a time in all hay where one of the doctors ended up they used to have to ask you like what on a scale of one to ten what your pain level is and i am so bad with doctors in the sense that i I have this tendency to properly like sugarcoat the problem and I don't know why I do it to myself like honestly it's so stupid like but it's something that I do so he, he come in and I felt like I was telling him like the wrong like not fully how the actual number I feel like I was kind of like making it a bit lower than I should have been because I don't know I think it's because I'm scared of doctors and that they can't really see the pain like they can only ask you about the pain but if you're in a 10 I think they in their head think you'd be screaming and going hysterical whereas like I was feeling some really bad pain but I didn't want to tell them because I knew how they were they'd be type of thing so my mum says to me one day you need to tell them the truth I know you you feel like a 10 sometimes so tell them like be honest with them so my mum was with me when this happened and he comes in and he asks me what um he asks me like scale of one to ten i say ten and he goes ten ten you mean like your arms being cut off sawn off and i was like nodding but he made me feel so small by just doing that and then later on you know they have the little brackets for the televisions to swing out 
he bangs his head on it and my mum just says is that a one or a ten because I think she at this point she just like was losing it with these doctors like she could see exactly what they were doing and yeah so it was just crazy like and then I feel like it got even more worse hi everyone um I've just put some lashes on and liner mm, so this is where we're at um now I'm gonna do some mascara but I can't remember where I was up to in the story I think it was when I got to adult services and I had some struggles with my doctors so my mum used to work in a pharmacy and she she ended up seeing like she knew someone who had fibromyalgia and she also had like customers who also had it so when she was talking to one of them they mentioned that they go to this specific doctor who's been he came out of retirement um so we went to our doctors and requested that we could see him because he used to be a fibromyalgia specialist but he was obviously retired so we we requested it he accepted and i went for my appointment and He was really nice um, and obviously like you can't, this is only like one test for fibro and normally they can only do it after they've ruled everything else out but he did it on me and it's basically so with fibro you, you end up having obviously like wide, widespread pain because your pain receptors are malfunctioning in a way that what they're doing is they're sending out a signal for pain where there is none so you also have like these a lot of points on your back like and each person bear in mind with fibro has a completely different experience because there's a huge amount of symptoms i'll try and put up a list of all the symptoms that you can get with fibro and each person has a different set of symptoms so it makes it difficult and that's why they have to like rule stuff out before they can do it but i think the average like time of being diagnosed is maybe like four or five years and if you're going undiagnosed for that long you're not getting treated so you're suffering and there's a test that can literally be done where they poke the points to see if you have a reaction to the points and if you do then you've got fibro <laughs> like if you have a certain amount of number of them then yeah you've got fibro so that's what happened i ended up he ended up diagnosing me i think there's 18 or 19 points altogether and i had 18 so it was pretty severe and he recommended that I try all these different vitamins and stuff. So I did, um, because, you know, I feel like I've been a person who would literally try anything, anything to feel better, like, and I've tried a lot of things. So I get these tablets and honestly, they don't really do much for me, so... I'm basically stuck now. I've got my diagnosis of fibromyalgia, but there's not really much they can do. Um, try tweaking with my tablets and stuff, and then they send me to pain cl clinic, which again is kind of like rehab, but with this one they do um like meditation stuff because fibromyalgia is something that's it's. I had see like this is the thing you, know, you just see me like looking blankly sometimes that's called brain fog it means sometimes that like I can literally have a thought in my mind be speaking it and then all of a sudden the thought's gone so <laughs> um so that's great um but yeah like basically fibromyalgia is caused by stress 
I don't mean caused by stress, it's made worse by stress. So I think what happens is when you go into stress mode, your pain receptors start sending out pain signals. It literally triggers pain. So that's why they try to like teach you meditation and stuff. And while that's all great and fine, it's really difficult trying to keep on top of stuff like that when I'm home. I don't know why. I feel like it's a lack of motivation. And yeah, I like I I'm at a place now where I'm kind of a bit better than I was. But it, I'm still quite ill. I think more than anything, when I say this, it's more that I've just learned, I've just learned to cope with it better, and it's made me a better person in a way. I think, like, not saying that I was a terrible person to begin with, and I deserved this, but um, I definitely feel like I'm a more compassionate, empathetic person now. I can look at people and think you know we've all got our own struggles like everyone's got a different set of struggles like nobody has it fully easy I mean I'm sure there are some people some very lucky people but for the most part everyone has their own struggles and yeah like I, I feel like I'm more I'm just a lot more sympathetic to people than I used to be and it's not that I wasn't sympathetic then I've always been quite sensitive so I feel like I've always had uh, sympathy but it makes you realize that like if I'm feeling this bad anyone around me could be feeling this bad so I can't really there's an old lady walking in front of you and she's walking slow she's not she's not having a good day she but she's lucky to get out you know so I try to think of it like that it's not always like easy but I I feel like for some people this illness could have made you bitter and I don't think it has for me. Definitely don't feel like I'm bitter towards it. Like, I feel like in my head, this has happened for a reason. Don't know the reason, but I have to believe that. I just have to because it keeps me going. Like, I have to believe that there's some plan that I don't know about. There's something, there's a reason. Um, maybe it was to make me a more empathetic person I'm not sure but either way it's either way I have fibro and it doesn't really matter why I got it I just have it and that's my life now um and it all started with a cat scratch I bet you everyone who's watching this video now is just going to be side-eyeing the cats. Like, mm. <laughs> but it never made me, like, hate cats or anything like that. Like, it's just, it really didn't. It made me, it made me sad that something that simple and can cause such a really bad reaction with me. But, you know, like, sometimes things just happen and you know like I can't complain I still I'm still relatively happy like I obviously have like major depression most days because let's be honest like when you've got a chronic illness mental health is obviously something that really really affects people so it's something that goes hand in hand I feel like with chronic illness and by the way, chronic pain and illness is something that has lasted past, I think it's past three to six months. So if you've had a pain for longer than that, it's actually classed as chronic pain. So just a good thing to know. And honestly, I don't really know where to end this in the sense that all I can say is that at the moment, I'm really struggling with doctors. Like doctors are not really being helpful at all in fact i feel like because i have fibromyalgia and fibromyalgia has a wide set of symptoms you go to the doctors and it's simply oh that's just your fibromyalgia they don't bother checking it and imagine being scratched by a cat 
imagine your health anxiety after getting a chronic illness from a cat scratch like obviously i'm going to be nervous about any new symptom but for some reason they don't really care like and if i ever have like more pain or i'm going through a time where it's quite bad they won't do anything because at this point like doctors have concluded that medication isn't really a good thing for fibromyalgia but let me tell you I need my medication <laughs> like genuinely it helps me get out of bed I don't I don't like the fact that they just are saying like no about tablets to people because it's like I get that you don't want to get people addicted but what if their quality of life is so bad that they need that like like that's how I feel anyway like my quality of life without tablets is terrible and that's why I, I take them you know I wouldn't take them if they didn't help me but for them they they just see it as well fibromyalgia is just like you need to you need to do yoga and you need to meditate it's like oh okay that's gonna help me is it because it really doesn't <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's been a lot with them. I'd like to know if anyone else has fibromyalgia or if anyone else has contracted it the same way I did. Because I just find that fascinating that you can get, you can get an illness like that from, from a cat scratch. <laughs> but like I've heard that people who get, um, Lyme's disease and they can, that can be contracted through ticks and stuff like that, that. so yeah I <laughs> don't really know where I'm going with this now I just wanted to tell this story because it's kind of been on my mind and it's kind of my life you know I am very I'll just say this like during the time where I was really ill, I was at my lowest point. Um, didn't want to be alive, to be honest. I mean, why would you? But uh, I feel like it's something with fibromyalgia because it's a chronic illness. Over the years, you learn to sort of cope by yourself. And if that doesn't mean that the pain gets any less it really doesn't but you just learn better ways of coping with it you know when to give yourself a break and sometimes the doctors like I found in the pain management thing like they can push you a bit and sometimes you need that don't get me wrong but then sometimes there are times where you just need that rest like when I'm out I can't walk for f for long periods of time because this has like been since when I had like chronic fatigue and stuff and when I was diagnosed with that it was kind of like I the only way I can describe it is like imagine walking with a person on your back through a sea of treacle that's that's the extent of how it feels to try and walk when you're exhausted and in pain and then things will start going wrong like my hip sometimes my hip feels like it dislocates like I don't and that's never been like looked at by the doctors but honestly I feel like it's something I'm gonna have to speak to them about because my hips are really sore lately and I don't I, don't, I just I, every time I get a new symptom it scares me and I, that's really understandable isn't it like it's really understandable that you get you get kind of scared of, of every new symptom but you know all it takes is for the doctors to just help you but even that is like yeah they just don't know anything about fibro all they know is the stuff that they've been told they don't know a cause they don't know a cure they just you go to them with fibromyalgia and they're just as stumped as you are like let's be honest like and you know like I've had some pretty horrendous side effects from 
you know, like the steroids they put me on. I don't really want to show it because I'm quite embarrassed, but I do have like a lump on the back of my neck. And when I went to the doctors to see if they could help with that, like we'll see what that was. They just told me that that was fatty tissue and that basically, basically they, there's nothing they can do for that because it's just fatty tissue and it's caused by steroids, like it can be a side effect of steroids. So yeah, not really the greatest response and I've been going back and I've been like trying to fight them on it because it's it's painful it's like a very painful lump it's not just like it's not just like a tiny lump that I don't feel anything like it really hurts my neck like it's a large lump like they it, you think you'd get something like that and you'd be able to get help but apparently not like it just sucks and the thing is uh, like I don't want people to take this the wrong way but I feel like the NHS is dying. And I don't mean that in the sense that, like, the people who work for the NHS are so... There are so many good people who work for the NHS. But I feel like the doctors are doing this thing where they try their best to, like, not see you, if that makes sense. Like, they'll try to fob you off as much as they can. And the NHS means that I could... I was able to get like free healthcare obviously so if I was in America I wouldn't have to pay for that like but at the same time ever since the conservatives have been in government kind of feel like the NHS is going downhill um they're definitely like pushing more people away that, that and especially over the past couple of years with COVID it's been so so bad like they've basically just been like kind of popping people off and people have been scared to go to the doctors obviously because of corona um so it's just been rough they i literally was going through a hard time a few years back and i ended up going to the doctors and instead of like you know like an actual <laughs> medical place they sent me to a charity like a charity instead of like that just amazes me like they're relying on charities to do their work for them like and it's kind of quite similar in a lot of ways with um just it's like physical health like they're preventing people from getting the help they need because I feel like I don't feel like it's getting enough funding or something's not, not right with the current system. That's what I'm saying. And it's just like not fair on people who, especially people who have like chronic illnesses, you know? I mean, it's not fair on every, anyone. Like, why? It just doesn't make any sense. But that's where we're at. And don't get me wrong when I say that. I am so grateful to have the NHS, I really am, but it's just not fair, genuinely, like, I don't understand the fact that they seem to care more about children, and I understand that children are precious and innocent, and, but what about the parents of those children who've got to look after them children? What if they get something wrong with them? Why are they not getting the same health, help and care that children are getting? Because I, when I got to adult services, it was such a shock to my system. Like, I didn't realise quite how bad it had gone. I just, I was just stunned and... It just it just scares me like all the people them like probably like slipped through the cracks because of that like it's just it's just crazy and I think there's this British mentality where it's like um just get on with it like you know just 
just get on with it and it's stiff upper lip and don't talk about these things like no we need to talk about these things because if we don't they're just getting brushed under the the rug and never being addressed and people are suffering it's it's crazy basically i'm sorry if this was super rambly i've tried so many times to film this but this is gonna have to be the last one um i just want to say that i'm gonna be doing this obviously medical mysteries looking into them however i just want you to know that obviously like this one is not like the most interesting i just wanted to let you know my story because i feel like I feel like if somebody told me they got a chronic illness from a cat, I'd be quite intrigued. But, um, yeah, like, I feel like fibromyalgia is a medical mystery. Like, they don't fully understand it. They don't understand what happens. They often say that it's caused by a trauma. But I, when I've spoke to a lot of people, some people don't even have a trauma. Maybe a trauma happened that they aren't even aware of, but they don't, they don't see it like a trauma that has caused this it just happens i mean i definitely probably had a trauma which was a cat scratch <laughs> such a <laughs> bad trauma uh cat scratch such a sensitive sensitive child <laughs> anyway um i'm just gonna put like a little bit of highlighter on the inner corner and then i think that's gonna be it and I feel like I've got everything off my chest that I wanted to, so, yeah, and I feel like I look ridiculous in these lashes, I feel like they're so long, I tried to do the trick where you put like glue on the brush and then do it that way, so it was a little bit easier this time. But those, I, I tried magnetic lashes and oh my god, they were so, the, the liner was such a mess. It was so bad. Like, I think that was part of the reason I ended up scrapping like yesterday, because I tried to do this yesterday. It's just because I feel like I was too rambly and then there was a point where the liner was just smudging all over my face. In fact, I got it all off, or I thought I did, and then when I woke up this morning, I had, like, black bits. It was a mess. I'm hoping this is better, though, and I hope you enjoyed this, and let me know your thoughts on this, and if you have any, like, crazy medical mystery stories, I'd love to hear them, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> Hopefully this, this video is actually decent. Um, Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!